So hi Sean, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks Molly, how are you? I'm doing all right, thank you. Thanks for coming back for another episode. I think everyone's enjoying them. Um, so today's going to be a bit different. We've been focusing on specific subjects for every single episode we've done so far. But today we're going to be, it's all over the place, all different subjects. So we're going to be asking you random questions sent in from employees at Belez. Um, so thank you to everyone for sending a question. And you're going to be answering them kind of quick fire style. So I'll ask you a question. You'll give me an answer and move on to the next one. Does that sound good? Sounds good. And these are completely anonymous. We don't know who sent in yeah, what. Yeah, we have no idea who sent them in. So if you see a question, um, we have no idea who sent it in, but thank you. Okay. Um, are you ready? Let's go. Okay. So the first question, kind of random. If you could live without a car or a phone for an entire year, which one would you choose? That's easy. It's a car. Live without a car? I could live without a car for a year quite happily. Could you? Yeah, I definitely choose without my car. Can't I, live without my phone. Well, um, I love I love running and I love cycling, and you know a lot of the time I travel by train or air. But my phone yeah. is where so much work gets done. Yeah, definitely. You'd have to kind of quit the les if you quit your phone. I guess. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> uh, next question is: What made you decide to go into IT? How did you know it would be a successful business, or did you know it was going to be successful? Well, I got into IT the first time round because um, I had my first computer at age four. And so I was into IT early on. I started programming when I was like seven or eight years old. Uh, you know, I had a great influence from my parents who were in the IT space. So that was always going to happen regardless. As far as getting into the IT business, um, I was in the software business for 10 years. And that was something I thoroughly enjoyed. And in most recent years, um, I thought, well, let's... Let's look at the hardware space. We've kind of done what we need to do in software. And, you know, as far as this space is concerned, with third party maintenance, it's a space ripe for for disruption. Yeah. And applying some new logical thinking and, you know, innovation. It, it was a no brainer. Yeah. And it was clear that it was going to be a success. We just had to have the right people on board, which I feel like we do. Yeah, definitely. It's all about who you have next year, isn't it? Um, so, kind of linking to the last question then, how did you come up with the company name Velez? <laughs> so, Velez, um, or Velez, is a Spanish word. Uh, it's ultimately, okay. it's, it's a Spanish town. Um, I grew up in southern Spain for most of my childhood and adolescence. Oh, spent I didn't know that. So, I spent close to 10 years living in Spain um, from a youngster. I went to Spanish schools. Uh, all my friends are Spanish, you know, so... I'm still fluent. Did you speak fluent? I'm still fluent today. Oh, that's uh, impressive. Um, it's been a few years since I left, but I'm still fluent and I still uh, speak to people in Spain and we communicate in Spanish, obviously. It's strange when you can still dream in another language as well. So I still dream in Spanish occasionally. So that's oh a strange one. Yeah, um, that is a strange one. But Velez is part of something called Velez Malaga, which is an area um, around which I grew up uh, as a younger as a younger lad. And when, when coming up with a new name for a company, it's always difficult to try and get something that's good for branding and marketing mm -hmm. and means something as well. Yeah. You know, Google, not many people know Google was a, a typing mistake. It was a typo. It was supposed to be Google. And Google right. means something, right? Yeah. But they typoed it. And with Velez, what I didn't, I wanted something that was unique enough that it stood out and people remembered it. And we didn't want to go down the traditional route of, something something it or something something technologies yeah. uh we want to be unique and velez really stands out in the marketplace not only as a, as a name and a brand but now as a you know a real powerhouse in the third party maintenance industry so yeah it's all it's all for my spanish uh heritage if you will i didn't actually know that so i think we should get that out there more we should know and um, the next question is completely random actually uh what's your best advice to give to young people so maybe uh, teenagers to like 20 um what advice would you give them it depends on what you're trying to achieve but i think the over uh, overarching advice which someone once gave to me many years ago is just have patience like there's no point in trying to achieve next year what would take 10 years to do, right? You can't, you don't sit down and watch a movie and go, I want to watch this one and a half hour movie in 30 seconds. You're not going to enjoy it, right? Yeah. Don't fast forward through things. 
a lot of things take time, they take patience, and for good reasons as well. Yeah. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, personally, professionally, um, and without having made those mistakes, how would you know they were mistakes to start with? So my advice when I speak at schools and universities and, and speak to young entrepreneurs is always, always, always time and patience. Mm, I think a lot of people don't realise that, do they? Not nowadays. Social media gives you an impression that you can have everything now, today. Mm, uh, definitely. And ultimately, trying to rush through life, you're not going to enjoy it. And, and you, need to, you need to have some setbacks. You need to be disappointed every now and again to appreciate and enjoy the good things. Yes, definitely. Um, so the next question we have, you might be a bit secretive on this one, but we may as well give it a try. Um, do we, can we hear about any big plans you have for Velez in 2021, other than obviously the growth in staff, because everyone knows about this now. Velez has grown massively in 2020 and you want to grow in 2021 as well. So is there anything else big that you might want to tell other people about? Um, we have a small group of people within the company that know about a secret project that we are working on, um, a new service offering ultimately. So there's a lot of people that know, or there's a few people in the business that know about that. Uh, a more broad idea of what we're up to is we are expanding into different service offerings which are uniquely related to what we do today. So whereas before we would keep ourselves on quite a narrow path of we only look at this or we only look at that. Going forward, we are looking at some broader topics. So, you know, be, be prepared for, yes, staff growth, because that's always that's always exciting. But also, you know, we're having people looking into other areas that surround IT services, and that's globally. So we have some very interesting industries that we're about to jump into this year, particularly in the UK. We've got some very, very interesting business that we're about to pick up. We've got some great awards coming in that it looks like we're going to be either nominated for and hopefully win. But also, I'd say probably the, the biggest thing to look forward to this year is that we're continuing to invest and grow in people. So, you know, we've got people where we are helping them through, whether it be apprenticeships or there are people in the company where we have paid for their master's degrees. Uh, we've paid for training courses and we really just want people to be the best version of themselves they can be this year. That's exactly what I expected. Very secretive, but giving a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, so the next question is, what have you found hardest for yourself and also for your team working from home over the past year? Uh, look, I don't think it's been easy for anybody anywhere in the world to work from home. We've been very fortunate in the sense of, for the most part, we was a company that operated um, remotely by default. You know, we almost we, we started with that at, at our heart and whether it's you're working from home away from the office that's 10 miles down the road or whether like us we have offices in different countries we are at all times remote from people in our other offices so for us it, i don't think working from home was an enormous change but what it did do was emphasize our reliance on being around each other I think a lot of people really, really missed just, you know, turning their head and talking to the person on the desk next to them um, and just remembering that whilst you work together, people also care for each other as well. And certainly for me, I was really struggling with not being able to see all the people that I work with in any of the offices, see them up close, be able to have a joke with them and a laugh and, and you know, as we say, see the white of their eyes, you know, that human contact, that for me was very difficult because I try and be close to a lot of people in the organisation if I can. For everyone else, I think it was the normal that's plagued most of the world, mental health issues with being locked down and unable to get out and about. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing is definitely that human connection. And I feel that now we have, particularly in the UK, a roadmap of where we're heading, hopefully. That is, that's starting now to to just come come to light a little bit better. Mm, giving people a bit of hope, isn't it? Um, so on the topic of motivation, it actually links in well. How do you re-motivate yourself if you've had a setback? Um, quite simply, really, is you've got to understand that setbacks happen. And, and it's linked to one of the previous questions when we talked about, you know, bad things happen and good things happen and you've got to move forward and grow and develop is you cannot go through life without experiencing setbacks. And 
for me, I always look at a setback of what went wrong first. And not that I beat myself up about it. I don't overanalyze it to the sense of, oh, I did X, Y, and Z wrong, and this is the most terrible thing in the world. I say, right, what are the fundamentals? What are the basics? Where did this go wrong? Why did it go wrong? And how do you prevent it in the future? And look at every single setback. And I've had some horrific setbacks over the years. Uh, but look at every single setback as an opportunity to go, well, next time I know about doing this or I know how to figure this out. And I think if you've got great people around you, those setbacks become very good learning curves. And if you can be transparent with people enough to the point where they understand why that setback happened, or even more importantly, they are brought in to understand what you're going to do to prevent those sorts of things going forward, you know, then a setback is just another page in another chapter in the book that is your life. Mm, definitely. I think it's important to realise that not everything goes smoothly in life. You need setbacks, like you said earlier, you need to have bad things to appreciate good things, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the, uh, and, and anyone that has watched any of the Rocky Balboa films, you know, over the years, um, you know, there is a scene in one of the Rocky films where he's talking to his son and he says, it's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how many times you can get hit and keep keep standing up yeah how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward how hard you can mm. get hit and keep moving forward and the key to that is and the key to life and success especially you know when when you are going through hard times is if someone knocks you down seven times make sure you get back up that eighth time yeah definitely um okay back to talking about Velez. very secretive again but where do you see Velez in the next 10 years Ten years, um, from now. ten years from now. Yeah. Still, still in the IT services space, without a doubt. And we have, we have a rolling five-year plan, so we know, you know, sort of where we're heading over the next five years. Uh, so very, very much focus on the IT space and services delivering managed services and, and and that realm. But I think the most important thing is understanding that nobody knows what the next ten years holds, and anybody that tells you they do. Uh, the the line. Yeah, that's think, true. Best not to like constrict yourself, I guess. Yeah, no, exactly. Definitely. I think the the biggest thing for me when I look at the next ten years um, is I'm looking at people in the organisation and I'm looking at them where are they going to be in the next ten years, because that will that will dictate where the company is. Because good way look at that. Well, one of the things that's really important if you take um, you know uh, our VP of service delivery, Trevor. He was in one company in particular for more than 20 years and started out, you know, low down on the in, in the uh, in the company and ended up as a director of the company. You've got from our podcast you hear of Steve Studley that started out as, a, as an engineer, became the CEO of the company uh, in, I think, 15 years. You've got Dwight Strayer at Service Express. Similar story, employee number four as an engineer became the COO of a you know thousand or close to thousand person company. So I'm looking at people in the organization going, okay, if I can help you over the next 10 years and you can become director of marketing, you can become COO, you can become CMO, you can become CEO. That then, because you're going to then take the company in the direction that you believe is best. Mm. It's, not, it's not what I think in 10 years time. Yeah, I like that actually. Um, so something more about you. Um, how has the pandemic and the past year affected your daily routine? So just you in general, I guess, your life. Uh, dramatically, uh, as, as it has for everybody, right? <laughs> so um, pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, um, I would travel a lot. I would fly an awful lot. Uh, it was not unusual in a year to fly 60 plus times. That was quite quite the norm, unfortunately. Um, my, my daily routine would normally, most days, I would go to my local swimming pool at 6.30 in the morning. I'd go do laps in the pool uh, and then come to work. And, you know, several times a week I'd run and several times a week I'd cycle. And that was kind of my life and revolving all of that around my primary um uh, importance which is my son now with the pandemic there's there's no gym so <laughs> I, 
had to build a home gym. So we've got the home gym going um, and trying to just navigate the normal circumstances that everybody has. So mm-hmm. I think everybody's daily routine has been disrupted immensely. And I'm so, so excited and, and I'm looking forward to getting back to the gym. I really yeah, am. Yeah, you're missing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, speaking about you used to travel a lot, what's the, ba- uh, the best place you've ever visited? This is one of the things that is really um, misunderstood, I feel, about business travel especially. right? And there's a guy um, called Granite who I always used to joke about, and I said, you know, my new home address is seat 3A on the Boeing 747 <laughs> because I'd spend so much time in an aeroplane. The thing that's misunderstood so much about uh, business travel especially is that normally it is get on a plane at a silly time, you're traveling for hours, you arrive at a hotel, you dump your stuff, you shower, you go out to do all the meetings that you need to do, you know, do the work that you need to do, and then you're back at the hotel, and then eventually you're back on a plane. So you don't actually get to see or experience yeah, no the location. So I have been so many places all over the world, but I couldn't tell you a lot about most of them because they were work-related. Mm-hmm. And so I am keen going forward when the world reopens a little bit more to spend a little bit more time in some of these places. So my favorite place to date uh, is, is probably going to be quite cliche. It's going to be something like Los Angeles, right? Um, I, I enjoy it out there. It's a beautiful place if you go to the right parts. But yeah. there are so many places around the world that I've been to and I just I haven't seen them properly, which is a shame. Is there anywhere you can go to that you've been to before that you think, I didn't see it properly, I want to go again? Yeah, I think um, Australia, for example, I've been to before. I didn't really get a chance to experience it very much. Um, And I think even places like Poland and Bulgaria, uh, I mean, I went to Bulgaria last just over a year ago. I flew in, did a meeting, had a sandwich, flew back out again in less than 12 hours. (laughs) And I'd love to... I'd love to have seen more of it because there are parts that look very beautiful. So where's your favourite place non-work related then? Would you say that's Los Angeles? Um, yeah, I guess so. Uh, a lot of people maybe prefer New York. I feel like I've done New York a few too many times now. Um, <laughs> in fact... I'm jealous. I'd love to go to New York. <laughs> well, Dan was with me. Our, our VP of Sales was with me in New York this time last year. And... Um, He'd never been before. And I said, look, we've got a day spare on this trip. We've got a spare day. I'm going to do all of New York. I'm going to show you all of New York in one day. Um, and we did it. You, you, you can get to New York in a day. We, we were tired afterwards, though. <laughs> I'm jealous. Um, so I think the next question we have is actually quite clever, and you're probably going to hate it, but I'm loving it. It's, what is the one question you did not want to be asked, and what's the answer to it? <laughs> People do ask me this, but it is very rare that they ask it. And my answer there is, but a question I do get, and I think people would like to ask is often, why? Why Why I do this? Oh, okay. Because... Have an answer? He, sort of, yeah. I think, you know, I, I've had great experiences and, and some successes over the years previously, and, and, you know, life has been pretty good to me. So a lot of people ask, why do you do this now? Why start another company or why be involved with another business and so on and so forth? Um, For me, I I take enormous, enormous pleasure out of seeing people grow. I really, really do. Um, I was very fortunate and through a lot of hard work to to have done some incredible things from a young age. And that served me very, very well. And I kind of like watching other people go through the process. And, And especially when I've got some people who I look at them and I say you have no idea what you're capable of yet you you have no idea where you're going but I can see not that I know everything but I can see hey I think you're going to do x y and z or I think you're going to go so far and if I can help nurture that or help um, bring that out of somebody I get enormous pride and pleasure out of that I think that was a good answer actually (laughs) That was a hard question, quite similar to the other pandemic questions, actually. Any advice to balance work and life, especially, obviously, if we're from home? People find that difficult. Obviously, they're 
at home life and their work life isn't the same place at the minute. Mm. And it's interesting hearing a lot of other um, business leaders talk about this because, you know, one of the most common answers I've heard on this topic is, um, you know, leave your home office and go and spend time with your family. You know, shut the computer down from your desk and go spend time. There's a lot of people that don't have a home office. Yes. They don't have a study. They don't have a separate space where they're living versus where they're working. Yeah. You know, whether it's you're working from your desk in your bedroom, whether you're working on the kitchen counter, you're working on the kitchen counter, you're working on the dining room table. Yeah. There's no there's no difference there, right? It's very, very hard. So for me, I think the biggest thing is just A, if you can find a separate space to work from. Yeah. Don't work from your bedroom if you can help it. <coughs> Don't work from the kitchen counter or or, or the sofa. Definitely work, don't work from the sofa. But <laughs> you need to find something that separates it or puts a boundary in there. Yeah. And, wh- and whether it is, and I know some people that do this, for example, is when they get up in the morning, they shower, they put on their work clothes or some clothes that are work-like, and they'll work throughout the day like that. And then when the work day ends, they'll go put the comfies on. Yeah. Like you would do normally when you come home from work, probably. So doing something that sets a boundary, a routine to create uh, imaginary routines if they need to be. Yeah, know. just to like separate the two lives, really. There's someone else I know um, who at the end of the workday turns the laptop off, grabs their keys, leaves the house, locks the door, and goes and sits in their car for 10 minutes comes back in the house i've not heard of that one (laughs) just a mental switch sometimes that's all you need is a mental switch over i mean it works different for everyone doesn't it so it's i guess it's just finding what works for you find what works for you what are the three steps to being successful i'm guessing there's not three (laughs) if you had to put it into three what would you say look i don't think there's three i don't think there's seven i don't think there's ten i don't think there's one um success is very very individual Everyone's got their own definition. Um, There's two things that I just, for me, just stick with me the whole time. One is show up. And the second one is just persistence. So show up and keep showing up. Show up and keep showing up. And as long as you do that and you apply that repeatedly, you really can't go wrong. Yeah. Right? So you can show up to work every day. Be persistent about showing up to work. And then you can show up in the work that you do. So you don't do the minimum. You show up. You bring forward what you are capable of. And you do that with persistence. Yeah. And then you work on self-improvement. So you show up to a course. You show up to a seminar. You show up to reading a book. You show up to doing something that progresses you. And then you stay persistent with that. Yeah. So show up and keep showing up. That's actually, because it's just that initial motivation and routine that really gets people into I guess being successful isn't it it is you know show up and keep showing up so showing up and persistence those are the two things that repeatedly are going around in my head you have a bad day show up keep showing up you have a good day you can't go show wrong. Up, keep going up <laughs> yeah um so another question about yourself what is your absolute favorite hobby to partake in outside of work um well pre-pandemic it was triathlons i i absolutely love participating in triathlon for me it's it's such a an achievement to to exhaust yourself swimming get out jump on a bike exhaust yourself on the bike put that on the rack and then go for a, a long run um that's my biggest hobby is training for and participating in triathlons during the pandemic, I would say I've become an, an avid Lego builder with my son. Uh, we've, we've bought more Lego sets than I care to think about at this point. And we're building anything from uh, Avenger jets and figurines and um, robots of Thanos and, and Iron Man. Through to building Star Wars, AT-AT walkers and, uh, and X-Wings and TIE Fighters. So... I've been enjoying that. It's quite therapeutic, actually. Is it more of a hobby for you, then, I'm guessing, than your son? (laughs) Well, he's four, and I'm buying him kits that are 12 years old plus. So what do you think? (laughs) 
Sounds fun. I've not heard that one. I didn't expect it, but there you go. <laughs> um, so the next question we have, I don't want you to give too much away actually, because in our last episode, just a, a little plug, uh, we did about the IT sector, past, present and future. Um, so everyone should go watch that if you want a bit more about that. But the question is, how do you think the IT sector will change in the next five years? Well, I think, yeah, I think we talked a little bit about this in the previous one, but in the immediate five years, I think you're going to see um, a lot of people return to the office. I think that's going to be the first thing that we see. There are a lot of corporates that have said, hey, you work from home permanently, so on and so forth. But whilst they're saying that, not a lot of them are getting rid of their office spaces. Mm. It's giving people the option, which is the important part, right? Yeah. So I think we're going to see a lot of people return to the office quickly. Um in due course and i think when that happens the biggest change we're going to see for the next five years is that we're going to see a lot of people get involved in a lot more diverse projects so now that digital transformation has sped up and has become much more prominent we're going to see people looking at hey how do we advance things like ai how do we advance things like machine learning because now the world's gotten much uh, closer to some of the digital transformation topics we've all been talking about for the last few years. Now we've actually got to make the advancements. Mm. You know, now we're at the point where, hey, we need all of this uh, stuff. Now we need to work towards it. So I'm seeing a, a lot more uh, activity around things like data scientists and big data analytics. We've, we've been talking about it for years. And yes, there have been projects around that. But I think you're going to see a lot more now where um, we see advancements in these areas quite quickly. So be prepared for some real, real interesting projects coming out, I would say. Mm, it's quite exciting, actually. Very, very exciting. Another question about Velez. Well, I guess it's about you, actually. If you had to choose your ultimate favourite part about Velez, what would it be? I really, really enjoy the trips that uh, we get to go on. And I know we've not been able to do many uh, recently, but, you know, it wasn't that long ago we took a lot of staff up to the mountains and we, we hired uh, cabins up in the mountains and, and went on some hikes we went to Albania and we did similar hiking through the mountains there on another trip we certainly had ambitions and have some ambitions this summer to do a to do a bit of a trip where we're going to take uh, a lot of people to the beach uh, and uh, overseas including the UK team so you know we've got some exciting trips planned so I'd say my favorite part are those trips where everybody everybody that participates participates on the same level so it doesn't matter what job you do, what role you play, you're another person wearing boots, trousers, T-shirt and sweating as we climb up these hills. <laughs> everyone's <And> equal. <laughs> everyone's equal. And I get the best job in the world, which is I get to run to the front of the group and hike with them for a little while and talk to them, drop back to catch my breath and talk to the people in the middle of the pack a little bit. You know, and I just get to engage with everybody. And, and for me... I, I enjoy nothing more than chatting to someone as we're, as we're out of breath on a hike for four or five hours and learning more about them individually. And when you can spend the day talking to people in your, in your company and you get to understand you know, who their partners are, what their parents do, what their brothers do, the, you know, the, the sister that's just graduated with a law degree, so on and so forth, that, that there's no, nothing better than that for me. We were talking earlier about different um, organisations making, well, letting their employees work from home or from office. What are your thoughts on choosing, letting your employees choose where they work um, after lockdown? This person actually added in a blog from Spotify. I don't know if you've heard they're letting their employees work from anywhere. Um, well, soon. I don't know if they're doing it yet. Or what are your thoughts on this uh, within Valet? Yeah, and I think I might have commented on that blog, actually, um, on LinkedIn at some stage saying it's a great idea. So the tricky part around this is that companies invest in office spaces and some invest in nice office spaces, some not so nice. You know, we always try and, and make nice office environments for people. I think the biggest problem is some people are more productive at home, some people are more productive in the office, some people need the flexibility for family reasons some people want the flexibility for their own personal reasons and that's fine i'm of the opinion and it's kind of where we're heading as we move forward of allowing people to be as flexible as it works for them 
and I think yeah. it has to be driven ultimately by performance is if you are highly performant at home but not in the office or vice versa that needs looking at and one of the biggest things that came about when all these companies you know a lot of the big firms especially in technology and finance they said right okay start of the pandemic everyone work from home and we're making it permanent and a lot of the big firms did this early on if you read the articles and it's still the case for a lot of the early adopters of this is they graduated and changed employees salaries and reduce them so if you don't work so i know facebook got into trouble for this as did a few others is yes you can work from home but because you're no longer coming into our office space in this town in this location therefore you know we can pay you less money mm. and so a lot of them have done that where they've reduced salaries. i think that's wrong i think that's very very wrong because you know, to suggest that, hey, you're not commuting now, so your commuting costs are zeroed out. Okay, yeah. but you're at home and you've got the heating on and you've got the electric bill, whatever. I, th I think you've got to keep salaries the same, regardless. What I would like to see going forward is more flexibility uh, for all of our teams that actually says, you know, unless you have a specific reason to be in the office at all times, which some roles perhaps do, um, I would say, you know, let's lean towards being a bit more remote and, and having that flexibility. I do not like working from home any more than one day a week. One day a week, and that's about the maximum that I want, because I want to be around the people. And yeah. as much as a Zoom call is good, you will never, ever have the same level of interaction with somebody as just passing by their desk and having a chat. Mm -hmm. And I think when you are a creative in in media and marketing you need to be around people to bounce those ideas around mm, definitely um you know if you're in sales there's this scope to say that actually being on your own at home is probably more beneficial because you can focus in and get done what you need to get done mm. and then if you look at our service desk you know that's already split across locations so um that that is one i see a lot of flexibility being able to be had in so it's role dependent, but I'm a big advocate for working from home if it works for you. It's different for every person, isn't it? Yeah. It has to be, and for every company. Yeah, definitely. Could you tell us a little bit of an insight into a day in the life of a CEO? <laughs> day in the life of a CEO. Well, if um, if some of these videos on YouTube would have you have you believe what a day in the life of a CEO is, it's you know waking up at four o'clock in the morning you know, mm -hmm. meditating for an hour, working out in the gym for three hours, doing four hours of work and then uh, jumping in the Lamborghini. No, um, <laughs> every day is different, which is what I enjoy the most. For me, I live on structure. I, I, I like good structure. So there's two things that I do in particular that help me get done what I need to get done every, every day. One of those is I do what's called time boxing, which is on my calendar every week, I have a set number of um, boxes of time, one hour, 30 minutes, two hours, whatever they might be, that are set in stone. They don't move. So every week, these things are the same because I know I need to get my head down and focus in these areas. Um, and the second thing that I do is I theme my days. So my days have a particular theme each day of the week. So, okay. you know, so for example, um, if you look at starting from Monday, uh, uh, Monday is my management day. So anything that's management related, one to ones with managers, all happens on a Monday. Yeah. And then I finish off the day with, with any company admin that needs to happen. Tuesdays, I try and focus on people, culture and recruitment and anything that's HR related that happens on a Tuesday. Wednesday is focus on growth, sales and marketing. So anything in those areas, I try and focus that into a Wednesday. Thursday is about products and services. So what are we delivering? How we're delivering it? Where we're delivering it? Yeah. And then Friday, which everyone enjoys, is finance. So I try and focus as much as I can on a Friday in finance areas. Mm -hmm. So for me, a, a standard day of this, in the life of the CEO is I'm up early. I unfortunately check email straight away just to make sure there's no fires anywhere in the world. <laughs> um, Typically, that would then move on to an, an early morning workout when the gyms are open, the pool's open. Mm -hmm. And then it is driving to the office, normally on phone calls, walking to the office, got a good amount of meetings, good amount of breathing space as well for anything that crops up here or there. 
try and tackle two to three main big rocks that need to be done that day. You know, always have two to three things that you must get done that day. You might have a to-do list with a hundred things on it, but you need your most important tasks, two or three most important tasks. Um, I always try and leave the office at a reasonable hour nowadays. Uh, Many years ago, when I was facing burnout, I was working 16, 18 hours a day quite happily. Um, I'm getting older now, so I try and leave the office at a reasonable hour. Make sure to eat properly, hydrate properly. um, And I get home and there's usually reading, another workout, um, and really focus on getting sleep. Yeah, definitely. Really. I think you've just given away all your secrets to success there. <laughs> I've, got, I've got some more, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so we do have a few random questions just to finish off. Um, first one is, someone's asked, do you watch football and what's your favourite team? I don't watch football, no. And... I'm guessing you don't have a favourite team then. <laughs> I don't have a favourite team, no. And, and I've sponsored football clubs over the years uh, for marketing purposes, but I don't watch football. And what will surprise a lot of people, perhaps, is that I don't have a TV in my home at all. Really? Not in the living room. There's probably about room. a million around the offices. That yeah, just surprised right. me. <laughs> so for the last, I don't know, two years perhaps, uh, I've not had a television in the house, and that's intentional. Um, Why is that? Because you don't watch it? or Yeah, I don't watch it. And for me, if there's a film or there's a series, uh, I'll, I'll usually watch them on a flight. And that's what I tend to do quite often. But honestly, I have my, my life is very scheduled, and I have some very, very important things in my life. My son, my family, my company. And... Yeah. I'm always trying to make forward progress in all those areas, be a better dad, be a better CEO, be a better partner, be a better son, brother, whatever it might be. And so when I'm home, I'm reading or I'm relaxing. And yes, you can relax to Netflix. But honestly, my days are very intense. So when I'm home, if I'm relaxing, it is either via reading or it's sleeping. Yeah. So no TVs at home. Yeah, I didn't expect that, to be honest. But a bit of a secret into your life there. Do you have any regrets in your life? <laughs> <laughs> well, going back to what we talked about before, right? you're always going to have setbacks and so on and so forth. Um, I don't believe in having regrets. Um, okay. There have been people in my life that have copied what I've done. There's been people that have ripped me off. There have been people that have scammed me. There's been people that have hurt me physically, emotionally, mentally, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, but I have no regrets. And everything happens for a reason, I believe. Yeah. Those reasons are ultimately part and parcel of life and the path you've taken and, and so on and so forth. There are good people, there are bad people, and there are people in between. So no regrets. I like that. I like that way of looking at it. Um, we'll do one last question, and it will be: Is the future written by us, or do you think it's pretty determined? Oh, no, that's a tough one. <laughs> that is a tough one. I think it's written by us. I think if you look, you can find a lot of coincidences. You can find a lot of things that you can connect the dots on. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that we set in motion the things that we want, whether that's consciously or subconsciously. You know, one of the things that I I look at connecting dots all the time and trying to relate things to one another. And my partner and I, we, we were um, at the same party once, years and years and years ago, we didn't know each other, in a completely different part of the country, hundreds of miles away, we were in the same party. That is uh, strange, isn't it? And then we met 10 plus years later. That's so crazy. was that written or was that just connecting dots on something? Mm-hmm. And I think I think we we rule our own lives to the point of what we are capable of running ourselves. Yeah, definitely. So that was the last question. So have you got anything else you would like to ask the viewers that they could maybe talk about or leave in the comments? Um, 
I have one for, for the guys inside who are going to listen to this. And I don't mean inside prison. I mean the guys inside the company that will listen to this. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to know from the team, you know, what one thing in the next three months can we do as a business that will take everyone up a notch? And we talked before about how, you know, a good company gets a 70 out of 100 on the employee satisfaction score. We're normally, and I just checked this morning, we're, we're usually anywhere between 85 and 90 out of 100 for your satisfaction on employees. I want to know what we can do to get to 100. Fair enough. Make sure everyone leaves it in the comments or messages Sean then. So thank you for answering all the questions. That's it. And thanks for the episode, I guess. We'll see you in the next one. All right. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. Bye.